what I've started with is I've started with uh, the, the similar one from the previous one where I actually had a team logo on the background, uh, the top line, bottom line text, and the, these little chips here. And if you look at the animation, they still kind of all come together. I've added a few more things. I've added a headshot to the scene. Okay, so if you open up here, go to where the team logo chip is, there's actually a he headshot in here. And you see that it's a little bit off frame to the right. So you know, a nice little trick in there is that you can actually set this to clamp and move it over a little bit. And it actually, you don't even have to put a mask in there, so it looks like it's cut off. The second thing is I took the logo and I moved it a little bit on the X. But again, it was masking just so that you can see more of the logo. Okay. And the GM logo. And then I've added a bottom a section to it as well. So that was message number 30. But you can see as I can add the text, it's still all linking. It's still all auto-following. And I actually have this auto-following so that it's centered under the text as well. But what I want to do is I want to link this to either an Excel spreadsheet or in my case I'm actually going to link it to a Google Doc and I'm just going to show you the Google Doc that I created. So here's the Google Doc which is basically the same as Excel only from Google. Um, to, to get into this you actually have to have a Gmail account so I actually have a Gmail account phil.carmichaelcarnego.com so that gives me the opportunity to go into a Google, a Google Sheets and in there I can create um, this, which just looks like an Excel spreadsheet. Now, a couple things I put in here. I put in the you know the player number. There's the name. This is a hero note. These are the stats. Now, where it says headshot, the reason why I, I did this down here, I didn't have to type it twice. I actually just put a little formula equals B2, so that's B2. Okay. So there's a reason why because I want to actually put the headshot. Now, traditionally, uh, if you were linking to a headshot, you would actually have to put in the whole path. And so this is a big change in the data object, and we're going to explain that in just a few minutes. But traditionally, I would have had to put in I backslash, uh, I colon backslash lyric um, 2015 training images and the, and the path of the name. So I'm just putting in his name here. And the same thing with the logo. I would have had to put the path in there, but I don't. And again, this is not a strictly to Google Docs. It works in Excel as well. You don't have to put in the whole path, and we'll explain that in just a sec. So this is a scene number 30. I'm just going to record that. And you can see again that as I type, the bars grow. Okay, so we'll go back. Now let's add the data object to this. So I'm going to click on the data object right here. And I'm going to select Google. Now the very first time you've done this, you actually have to authenticate your account. So basically typing in your Gmail account and your password. Um, but from then on, once it's authenticated, you don't have to do that anymore. So again, I go in here, and this shows me all of my my Gmail Sheets or my uh, Google Sheets, but I want to pick this one here and hit Continue. And now you're going to see this, and it looks exactly the same uh, as the Google Sheet that we created. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, assign these templates here. So in here, you can see that these are the all the layers that are in my scene. So under player number, we'll go to player number text. This is uh, the name. This is uh, the hero note, hero line text. This is stat one, stat two, three, headshot, player headshot and team logo and we'll hit OK. Now if I record this, let's record this to scene number 31. When I call up 31 you can see that it filled in the information from my Google spreadsheet. So again we'll come back to this and you'll see that it picked up the first one which was Curtis Granderson. Now it didn't pick up his headshot. What do we have to do to, to add it to the headshot? All right, so let's go back to the data object properties. You can see here, and again, I could have gone into the Google Sheets and put in the whole path name here, but it allows me to format this column. So I can actually add a prefix to that headshot. And 
this is my headshots. So I'm going to do something and I'm going to leave something out because this is good uh, to basically do it wrong the first time and it helps you uh, learn. But I'm, I think that all I have to do is copy this. Okay, so I'm copying that and pasting it in there. And then it's a dot .tiff, so if I add dot .tiff to the very end, I think that I'm done. But if you actually look at here, so we'll just stretch this out a little bit. What happened here is it actually gave me the path, but you can see at the end of headshots, it left off back uh, slash. So what I have to actually do in there is at the very end, even though I copied that, I actually have to add a backslash. Okay. And then we do the same thing for the team logos. So again, I bring this back here and here's my team logos. So copy this, go into the format, cop, paste this in, put in a backslash, and add the suffix of a dot .tiff, because that's the file format. Now there's one more column that I want to uh, update. You can see where it says average, and you know we all had these problems in Excel when we add a, you know, a dot two, three, six, because that's the actual average. Sometimes the dot didn't show up and we had to put formulas. But again, very similar, very simple in here to go into format column, add a prefix, and just add a period. And now the period shows up. So again, very easy to do that. All right, so now let's record this to, to scene 32. And now when I call up scene 32, it changed the headshot, okay? even though that headshot that headshot is the same he plays for the New York Mets all right so let's go in here and check this out one more time you can see that it only picked up the first row of this and i wanted to be able to pick up any of these rows okay so i could go uh, where all rows and the player number is three or 50 and you can see that uh, now it picks up number 50 now I lost uh, all the bindings so I'd have to go in and put the bindings in, in again but you can see that when I did this it actually put in a little what appears to be um, uh, code here and I can actually use this code so if I copy this right here and I'm I'm going to go out because I actually made the bindings once so they should still be there and yes they are so now if I come down to custom query and add this in it should take me to number 50 and it does so this is one way of being able to go to each row that you want to in here and this is actually a start um, but this tutorial is on doing uh, parameters and that's where we want to take this so instead of putting in 50 I want to put in um, a parameter and a parameter is basically saying okay uh, give me uh, in, a, in another menu give me an easy way of selecting 50 or number 21 or whatever number that you want and so basically the code that I put in here and it's it's a uh, curly brackets and I give it a scene and two semicolons now the parameter, I give, I, I actually name the parameter, and this can be anything you want. So I'm going to call this baseball because it's uh, baseball stats. Um, and give it and curly brackets. And so now you can see that it's actually come back. It's come back to the very top. Now if I typed in 50 or 3 here, it would still work. But this becomes my custom query. Now. As I did before, you see it lost the binding. So if I just copy this and come out of here and go back into the objects again and paste it in, you can see that the bindings all stay in place. All right, so this basically is done. I'm going to come back here, and now I'm going to record this to scene number 33. So let's go into what we're talking about as parameters. So it, under the config menu you can see that there's a new listing called parameters list 
there's an application parameter or a scene parameter. And what's the difference? Well, obviously if I'm on scene, this parameter gets associated with this scene, which is scene number 33. If it's an application, I can actually create a parameter as an application and have this linked to many different scenes. So an example of that would be, let's say I have a scoreboard graphic that has a clock and the clock is the parameter. Well, I could have multiple uh, clock scenes and there, the, I'd only have to do this once. I'd only have to build it once and it would be linked to all of the scenes. But in this, uh, in this case, I'm going to go scene. So I'm going to add a parameter. And remember before, I typed in the parameter as baseball. So we'll give it the same name. And the parameter is what player number do I want? Okay, so I have number three here. I could actually put in number 50 now and hit finish. And why did it not change? Well, uh, manually, when I'm doing this manually, I'd have to actually go over here to edit and update the data object fields. And when I do that, you can see that it actually changed. It went and got the headshot, the new logo, put in the, the stat, and the auto follow all works. Okay, so I could go again, go to parameters list, go into the scene, and let's try another player, number 21. And again, when I do the update, data object fields, it changes. Okay, so this is um, almost done now. <clears throat> Let's record this to number 34. All right, now what I want to do, if I make a very simple macro, and what the macro is going to do is going to give me a little input box here, and where I can actually type in the number that I want, 21, 3, 50, and the macro then does the uh, call, uh, calls up the parameter and basically does this update data all in one one section. So I actually have, if you go to the Lyric Training, okay, if I go to the Lyric Training, there is a macro folder and this is the macro here. So if I just click on it, let's take a look at what that macro, I'm just going to open up the macro window first to show you what it is. Okay, so I've associated this macro to F4. And basically what the script is, uh, I have this, uh, so remember, I, okay, so I've, I've put this on message number 33. Actually, let's see, was it 34? I just wanted to make sure, yes, 34 was my new one. Okay, so I can actually change this. I don't, I don't need this part right here, but this is just helps with part of the macro that I don't have to read 34 first and then hit the F4. So I'm going to put it all into into this macro. So there's, it's going to read up 34. I have a wait to, so basically it waits till it calls it up. Then it actually says, give me a, an input box. So in VB scripting, this is an input box that pops up on the screen. And I'm going to just call the input box baseball player number. And I can type in anything I want there. And when I hit the value, of it, it's basically saying I'm going to do a parameter. Uh, the parameter is called baseball, and I'm going to put in the value, which is 50. And then this is just uh, uh, another part that goes and does that. And at the very end, it says uh, auto execute embedded macro, active canvas selection, update data. So basically, again, this macro does this for me. It opens this up, it puts in a value here and it updates this all at the one time all right so i've i want to save this again so let's hit save and we'll put it back there so we have it okay so let's just test it if i hit hit the play button there's mine so now i could type in 50 and hit enter and it went to google docs and updated that all at the same time so again, a very easy way to update your scenes. At this point, you could save this to a message number. You could save this to 150 and you know then do it again. And say I want a uh, message three and then save that to 103. You could go through that and do that or you can do this live and that stat could be updating live by anybody. So again, just to recap, this is uh, using the auto follow to create a, you know, a kind of a complex looking graphic. 
that has animation and more importantly the animation doesn't matter how the auto follow has changed the length of the bars the animation is going to work every time and then we've linked this to a Google sheet that's very similar to Excel and then we put a parameter on it that we want to be able to go and select any one of those uh, rows in the Google sheet